Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is under pressure at Manchester United in his role as manager. Even the staunchest supporters of Solskjaer have to admit that by now. And while I think that Solskjaer has been a big success overall at United, he's succeeded where Moyes failed, where Van Gaal failed, where Mourinho failed in turning United into an actual club, moving away from being an utter failure to being to the point where people now consider our squad good enough to be title contenders. We're falling drastically short of that. We might only be two points off the top, but we still have to play all the top teams around us. So what will happen towards the end of October? Change is needed at Manchester United. For so many of you, you want that change to be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being sacked as United manager. I A, don't think that would be the right thing to do right now. And I B, there's, there's no chance of it happening, in my opinion. We're, we're only two points off top. We've got three points in the Champions League. But change is needed. So what I want to do in this video is run through the changes I think that could happen and should happen at Manchester United because make no mistake about it, change needs to happen because if it doesn't, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be eventually sacked as United manager. So I want to run through these points with you. Make sure if you would by the end of the video, if you enjoyed it, please drop a like on it and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But I want to take a look at these changes. Right now, I think there's only one place we can really properly start when looking at United's problems, and that's in defence. Manchester United right now are on our longest ever run in the Premier League without a clean sheet at Old Trafford. A record going back 50 years. Our defensive unit is abysmal. And if you look at this, we can all remember it. November 2020, Istanbul. Our entire team goes up for a corner. Matic is the last player back and it's the worst 100 metre race you've ever going to see in your life and Denver Bar scores. Fast forward to October 2021 and look at the defensive position in here. Shaw's been moved out. Everybody's gone over towards the ball like honeypot football in under nines. You would hate to see that even at youth football, let alone at Manchester United. And that both of those examples are nearly a year apart. What does that tell you? It tells you that the problem is not the players. We might have been missing Maguire there, but we had Varane. We've got De Gea, Shaw, Wan-Bissaka and Lindelof. All in that back five there against Everton. A, a back five that should be capable of keeping that clean sheet. But it isn't. And nearly a year apart, it tells you that one thing is the problem at Manchester United. And that is the coaching. You're going to look at Brighton under Potter. You're going to look at Klopp with Liverpool and Guardiola with City. They are a unit. Even if players are... It, look, Basuma wasn't there for Brighton. It doesn't really change how Brighton play. Liverpool have been out without players plenty over the last two years. It certainly changed how they played defence last year. But as a unit, it doesn't really matter exactly what players are there. At its core, the unit stays the same. Now, for me, that has to come down to coaching. And so many of you will point to the fact that Solskjaer is the coach of Manchester United. He is the head coach. But I think the coaching staff needs to be really, really addressed. Because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for me, is at a crucial stage now where he's missed the nice guy. He never throws his players under the bus. He's already publicly come out and said, I believe in my coaching staff. I believe in everything that's going on. But you can't tell me that a year apart, even after signing Varane, and we're still seeing those sorts of amateur defensive mistakes and a real inability to keep a clean sheet, Things need to change. Solskjaer knew that this summer. That's why we went and got Eric Ramsey as a new set-piece coach for Manchester United. It's worked in part. Hell, look at Alex Tellez' volley against um, Villarreal. That was no accident. That was from the training ground. But then we concede from a corner against Everton, conceding from a corner. You can see that Eric Ramsey was brought into with the intention of fixing a problem at the club. Now, Fergie was, for me, he was a manager. He wasn't a coach. He never was a coach. He always said that. Training ground, he would always stand and watch. He would have surround himself by people like René Muhlenstein, who was so crucial for Fergie. Surround himself with people like Carlos Quires. Because Solskjaer has fundamental flaws in his ability to manage a football team. And his flaws certainly surround coaching and what we're doing on the training ground. Because... You can't ignore the fact that we had those mistakes back in November last year and in October this year. We've still got them. Things are wrong. Categorically wrong. McKenna is learning on the job. Carrick is learning on the job. Solskjaer is learning on the job. Mike Phelan is the man that is there to bridge that gap, to bring the experience from the past and bring it to now. I question whether 
he is the right man to do so. I really do. What I want to do is actually, I'm going to try and find somebody to speak to. If you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'm going to speak to some football coaches to, to get a critique from a footballing perspective because for a fan looking in, looking in, he's just not doing enough. And for me, it has to fall down to feeling in that sense. And everyone says, oh, don't throw the coaches under the bus. Hell, you're, all of you are throwing Solskjaer under the bus. So why not? Eventually, all those coaches will be sacked if Solskjaer is sacked. So why not change the coaches first and see if they are the problem? Because I think there's elements of Solskjaer's management that I want to keep at Manchester United. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer might well be digging his own grave. If he continues to stick with McFred, I think Solskjaer is digging his own grave. Because as much of our defensive... Look, if you cannot keep a clean sheet with David De Gea in your team, with a back four of Shaw, Wan-Bissaka, Varane and Lindelof, and two defensive midfielders, what are you doing? They are not... If, if you're not able to keep clean sheets left, right and centre and not offering enough going forward, I would understand his clamour to keep Scott McTominay and Fred in midfield because we were keeping clean sheets. But we're not. We're consistently conceding goals whilst they are there. So what's the point in having a back two defensive midfielders if they don't give you that clean sheet that they are there for? It's pointless. Solskjaer is digging his own grave. Arrest in peace. By sticking to loyal player selection that does not deserve it. Pick players on form. Pogba should be playing in midfield there if Rashford's going to be playing on the left wing when he comes back, Solskjaer. Don't dig your own grave with McFred. My God, it's not worth it. Try things. I know you experimented against Villarreal by playing McTominay as a number six, but we all know Scott McTominay is not a number six, so that didn't work. Lo and behold, who possibly saw that coming? But change has to happen there with the player selection if Solskjaer is going to get what he wants, which is ultimately Manchester United playing as a team, as a unit. With a style. We all know how we want Manchester United to play. We've seen in moments how good Manchester United can be when we play. But rarely do we see Manchester United playing as a team. And the Liverpool 2 all draw with City put further spotlight on this. Because you look at how well coached those two teams are and how well drilled. And it was just a fantastic display of elite level football. Which is where Manchester United want to be. It's our ambition to get there. So if that's the level... What needs to change from where we are now to, to there? Now, of course, a central midfielder would definitely improve our shape and our balance of our team, but it would be foolish to try and negate all of our problems and say they all revolve around the fact that we don't have a central midfielder. It's not true. The problems run deeper than that. And Solskjaer now has two weeks to really address... I, I don't think we've got enough time to really sort these coaching issues out because we're not going to get any new coaching staff in in that time. And Solskjaer, as I said, he's backing his coaching staff. But simply put, Ole, it's going to be your head on that block or it might be their head. And he he is a man with an ego. He is a man with a massive ego. Everybody at the top level of football has to have an ego to succeed. And he has to put himself first. He has to be selfish here. And clearly the coaching at Manchester United is not good enough. Solskjaer is part of that. The coaches are part of that. And if Solskjaer, for me, wants to keep that job, he has to point the finger elsewhere. Simple. Otherwise, I feel it's a one-way ticket to him being sacked. Because change has to happen with how Manchester United are in a coaching sense. I'm starting to repeat myself now. Because, look, we had the problems there last November against Istanbul, and we're seeing them again still, almost every game. Change it, man. Don't be so stubborn. In the same concept of don't be so stubborn with McTominay and Fred. And stubbornness, I think, is something that's good. Maybe it's his pride. Pride always gets you hurt, man. Solskjaer needs to change these things if he's going to survive as Manchester United manager. I don't think he is going to be sacked right now. But if he continues to be stubborn with the coaching, with the staff, with the players, with McFred, with certain things, it's a one-way ticket to being sacked. So I want to see these sorts of changes brought in by Solskjaer. There has to be something that goes on with the coaches, with the coaching and with the coaches. It's not right at United. It is not right. McFred, that is not right. The defensive unit is not right. These things need to be addressed. Because if they're not, Ollie, you will be sacked. But that's what I, I want to do a video just discussing this. As I said, I don't think Solskjaer should or will be sacked right now. But change has to happen, man. You let me know in the comments below where you think that change comes from. 
Can you only look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being sacked as the only change that can possibly happen at United? Or do you think there are things that could happen in-house right now as we are that would help Manchester United get to... Because at the moment, that gap between Liverpool City and United is getting bigger, not getting smaller. And that's after we signed Ronaldo, Sancho and Varane. There's no excuse for that. So you let me know what you think about that in the comments below. So many people are sort of slating me as deluded right now. But I'm looking at this team and I know we're not going to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So what I'm trying to do is positively look at other ways that we can improve our team. And if after those changes are or aren't put in and all these results continue, then he will be sacked like any other manager in world football would be. But I want to know from you in the comments below, what do you think could be changed now without sacking Solskjaer that could really make the sort of drastic differences that we need to get towards where Liverpool and City are? Genuinely, I'm really interested. You Let me know in the comments below, please, as always. And subscribe if you're new. But please get your opinions in the comments about Oli and what changes you think are needed at United if Solskjaer is not to be sacked.